With an unexpected family connection to one of the team, Spiral travelled to Sussex to investigate the historic Anne of Cleves house. Built in the 15th century, this timber-framed Wilden Hall House houses a wide-ranging collection of Sussex historical interest, including an ironwork gallery, a pottery. Although doubtful she even saw the property that bears her name, the house was given to Anne of Cleves in 1541 as part of the divorce settlement from King Henry VIII. Although the name of the house Anne of Cleves is actually a modern title given in 1910, with a building originally called the Portrait House. The house was owned by the Verrill family for 150 years and remained in the family until 1923 when it was sold to the Sussex Archaeological Society. Remarkably, just a few days prior to visiting here, team member Mandy discovered that her mother's husband is Andrew Verrill, a descendant of this prominent family who owned much of this area. We wonder if medium Alan Barnett will pick up on this information or this interesting fact. The property is alleged to be haunted by a female figure who seems to leave doors open on the top floors and a strong presence is felt in the upper bedroom. A few days prior to the investigation, medium Alan Barnett and I wreck the location and take a walk around this historic property. As we come up these stairs, there's a lady standing at the top of these stairs. She's not coming down the stairs, she's actually... Um, it's more like she's waiting, watching. Another room that uh, I feel that could be active. There's a definite change of energy in here. That's another nice area. Yeah, as we uh, as we come through this lovely little kitchen area, um, earlier I got the name Richard Warren. So whether that's any significance in that, I don't know. I mean, there's so many generations of people that have lived and died. A week later, Alan came across this name again when we visited the nearby Lewis Castle, with William de Warren being a prominent name in the area after the Norman Conquest. De Warren? William de Warren? Remember? You said Richard de Warren, was it Richard? Yeah, no, yeah I did. I, but de Warren was good to get Warren, money not it? De Warren. Yeah. I said Dean. Yeah, you did, yeah. Right, and this area here. Initially, when we were up here, there was a lot of children running around, so it's very hard. But when you came back from this beam, back in between these two beams, there was um, a very strong presence. Small male, perhaps so high. Tiny man. And I mean, that was active spirit, very close to us. Okay, here we are at Anne of Cleves House in Lewis in Sussex. We walk around with Alan, he's been getting a few things. We're here on Wednesday, uh, ahead of the investigation on Saturday, we're doing a bit of a recce. Very interesting rooms here, a lot of history, a lot of layers. We've already got some good places where we can do some vigils um, and just see what we come up with. So uh, next time you see us, it's going to be Saturday night. With the team in place, we begin a walk round, starting in the upper bedroom. Not that it's relevant to any particular period. Oh, <laughs> But I really get a feel of um, someone living here with a link to, to linens and cloths and, you know, at some time. Perhaps they dealt in them in some way, you know. <clears throat> I get a real strong impression of that. But whoever lived here at some time was, like I said to you earlier, very important within the community, very high up within the community, like a, you know, like magistrate and, but more than that, yeah, much more than that, much more than that, you know, very high position. Thanks. You still see these original floors, these floorboards. Yeah. 
are just this incredible. This is really rare, isn't it? Yeah. The layer you get, the narrower they get, mm. don't they? they you look in even Hampton Court um, in the late 1600s or in William, you know? I think there's, there's so many areas of this place that change, change use. Bits taken out, bits added, extended, changed around. But I really feel that this is one of the longest serving the same purpose. Not just because of the fireplace, it's just, it's, it's the impression of people, the hustle and bustle of people in here, busy. Moving on, we head upstairs into the Lewis room. Right. So the man I picked up before here, short man, when we came on the recce, I know he was one of the very important people, of the, probably one of the most important that's lived in this house. He's someone who's in control, not just in the house, in control of this whole area. place, area town area. Very, very... <laughs> he's full of self-importance. He's very full of self-importance, you know? You know, I was getting confused the other day with, with this Richard Warren, I'm not sure. And I said, no, I've got a D as the... So D Warren, but it could be Warren Durr. Warren Durr. like that, but it... <laughs> It's not always clear, you know, you just you come in. Um, but this man is very, very... He was very important, very... Felt, he felt very powerful, very, felt very, you know? He's a very short man. And oh, they talk about height. No, I'm not sure, but, small man but he was a small man. And I think that made him feel even more self-important yeah mm -hmm. the thing about his podium. yeah about his height as well and uh, it made him even more aggressive about his power and control of things you know? mm -hmm. with information coming through we head downstairs to the foundry it's very heady down here for some reason so I, saying, I know they call this bit the foundry i don't know if they ever did use it for that but I get a feeling of it being used industrial-wise anyway, right? But not particularly to do with this stuff here. So this is something before that, if this was ever, I don't really ever get, I don't get a strong impression of this being actually done here at all. But, but it was used commercially out here, right? The roof was indeed a much earlier addition that separates the Lewis room and the foundry. So I'm much more convinced now than the other day that I picked the man up up there, the short man, and the woman at the top of the stairs. And they're both quite elderly, and they're both, I'm beginning to feel, from the same period and linked, same family, perhaps even a husband and wife, you know? Okay. And, and they're feeling stronger and stronger in this place. Yeah. Okay. From what I know, uh, the name Richard is really, really important. That's the one thing that my mum's husband, Andy, said to me about. Um, and I know that there was a Richard Verrill who had his throat cut and was murdered and found down by the river. I know that he was a very prominent figure in the local community and actually the Verrill family were for the whole of Lewis. Um, the house over the road, South Over Manor, as well as this place, and there was an auction house up the road as well. The girls start the night's vigils in the master bedroom. Let's just sit here in the centre. Okay. I'm going to switch this. I'll just... Uh, do you mind if I just take a quick photograph that way, so I know what I'm doing? If there's somebody in the room with us, and you can hear us, and if that was you that Alan has seen standing at the top of the stairs, Anybody that's in here, could you please do something to let us know that you're here? Make a sound. Doesn't appear to be a great deal going on in here. No, not really. What was that? Oh. So here we're on the upper, uh, upper bedroom, we come and join the girls. We've just done a little solo vigil. Do you hear that? 
What? Uh, yeah, did you hear it? What? Yeah. Someone go what? Uh, I was talking over there. And there was a loud. And there was here. It was a. Um... I thought it was you. No, it wasn't. I thought it was someone talking, but it was like here. It's like. Um... Did you go upstairs? Alan picked up something there on Wednesday. Tap. Make a sound. Groaning sound. Footsteps. Just let us know you're here, come on. Oh, the last time it was in private hands, I think after that, then it was opened up as such, partitions that taken down, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and to try and make it look back as it would have been, you know? But I think for a long, long time, a lot of these upper, upper areas were separate small rooms, bedrooms and, you know? I love this place, Anna Cleves House uh, in Sussex. It's, I've never, it's lovely to go into a house where you've retained so much Tudor uh, architecture and the, the panel beams, everything, absolutely incredible. Well, that's called Anna Cleves House. That's actually a modern invention that wasn't, that didn't come into being until 1910. Before that, it's called the Portrait House. So if you come in and under this beam here, same as the other day, it's like this. It's like this is an area all on its own between these beams, you know. And it's like the energy changes. Meeting room. Meeting room. What is? <coughs> Meetings were held in here. Is it? So you're picking that clairvoyantly, or who's saying? That's what I'm getting. Oh, meetings, right? Okay. It's like this was used for meetings. Well, the only way I can say that is it as if it was like used as a courtroom Court, or something, courtroom. Or something, you know? Mm -hmm. People were brought in to face him here or to answer to him. That's more. It's all making sense. Is it? Yeah. It does. It's like people were brought here in front of him, you know? To answer to him. It's like... Um, like being tried in some way. I just Can can't. I say not legally, maybe? Maybe just no. because he was such a. Powerful. Yeah. Well, that's why perhaps I'm not getting the detail and I can't yes. say it's a call because yeah, it's no. not a call. But, but he had the power, and, and like I said to you earlier, I feel this, he had the power of life and death over some people. <laughs> One of the Verrill family, called Plumer Verrill, was an auctioneer. He lived in this house during the 19th century. In, I think, 1836, there was an avalanche, quite famous, and it fell onto the poor house. And Plumer, although he was very rich, very wealthy, quite powerful man, he went himself and pulled as many people as he could from the wreckage. And my mum has his portrait hanging in Chicago. In Chicago. It doesn't feel like you think it's it, one building. It feels that this building, if you, you know, sh this floor shouldn't be here. You should be in this building looking right up to that roof as oh. one, if you understand mm. what I mean, without this floor in here. That's what it feels like. That's what it originally should have been. Right. The foundry was later confirmed as once having no ceiling and was once a large room. Top, I said I felt it was meetings and people were in, but when we were down in the bottom there, I said I felt this was used commercially. Yeah, and it could well have been. Well, it's the he same was building. There and here and there and stuff. Oh. And uh, Gina said they've got his gavel somewhere right. in the building. It's yeah. in storage at the moment, but they have got it here. Yeah. We decided it was time for Mandy to explain to Alan her family's connection with the house and area. Well, first of all, when I first said to my mum what I was doing this weekend, and she said, oh, really, where are you going? And I told her, she said, oh, my goodness, this was um, her husband's ancestral family home, and their name is the Verrill family, mm. and they owned big parts of Lewis yeah. all through the 17th and 18th century, some, some before that, but they became really prominent in the 17th and 18th century. Yeah and they owned this house right up until 1922. But Richard is a really prominent name in that family and they were very powerful people. They owned the house over the road and an auction house just up the road. Various different pubs, the brewery, all sorts. But the name Richard that you were coming out with, and I know then you said De Warren, but Richard Verrill was 
quite a prominent figure and he was found murdered down by the river. Yeah. And there's a big oil painting up there of the avalanche. And All right. um, my mum has an oil painting that used to hang in this house, in her house now over in America, right. of the man who, he was a really, really nice guy <laughs> and he went and rescued some people from so they had that. this house till 1920, the same family? Well, from, yeah, from like seven, late 1700s. Yeah. Until That's 1922, yeah. That's good, it's nice. Now, now you can introduce yourself. And exactly. We'll see if we can get any response from you. Yeah. So it's one of your relatives here. Exactly. Are you listening? <laughs> Come back up to the master bedroom for the last vigil of the night. See what happens here. We're going to try and in the tapestry room as well. Are you listening around us? Mandy's stepfather is one of your ancestors. Can you please come and communicate with us? Come and say hello. Especially Pluma, you're our favourite. I don't think you actually lived here, but I think you lived in the area. And caught oh, trapping outside, didn't So can you please come in? Just say hello. It was really, it's such a sweet name, but not, it's really an unusual name. And I can't remember what it was well, now. It was a lady I saw at the stairs, at the top of the stairs up here, originally, when we were at Wednesday. Um, and the man was the other side, but I don't feel that one or the other, I think they both just move around as they want. Yeah. So I don't I think you can. I, I don't think name. you have to tie one to any particular area. No. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Verrill. Yes, he has. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> any member of the Verrill family around? Known it for, for centuries, didn't they? Yeah. One of your descendants here. Like we said, Mandy's stepfather is Andrew Verrill. So will you come in close and talk to us? Communicate with us, please. Just make a sound. Footprints, anything. Just tap on the floor. Do what you like. Our visit to Anne of Cleese House had been very interesting. Not least for Mandy, who uncovered some aspects of the family history. Unfortunately, any potential evidence of paranormal activity was not forthcoming and the lock-off DV equipment did not capture anything significant. Anne of Cleves House was still a fascinating location to explore, and under the management of Sussex past, they have protected its heritage for generations in the future to enjoy.